Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents Can We Grow Safe and Nutritious Food in Space? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Frontiers in Plant Science, published on March 6, 2020. Research conducted by Christina L. M. Kodadad, Joya D. Massa, and others from ACOM Management Services and NASA UB, both at the Kennedy Space Center. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Have your parents ever told you to eat your vegetables because they're good for you? Well, vegetables have a lot of nutrients in them that are essential to a balanced diet. While you might get these foods at the store, astronauts rely on processed meals. We wanted to find out if there was a way to grow safe and nutritious salad crops on the International Space Station, ISS, to help supplement their diets. We used a growth chamber called Veggie to grow crops of red romaine lettuce over three different years. We found that our lettuce was safe to eat, although the nutrient content of our lettuce varied slightly each year. For future long-duration space missions, it will be important to make sure that astronauts can create the same growing conditions for every crop of salad. Introduction. Have you ever wondered what astronauts eat when they're in space? What would they eat if they had to travel all the way to Mars? A lot of the food astronauts eat is processed because it's simple to eat and easy to transport into space. Unfortunately, processed foods are sometimes low in essential micronutrients like potassium or vitamin K. Some vitamins can break down if the food is stored for a long time. People can develop health issues if they don't eat a balanced diet. Growing fresh food in space to supplement the processed food they bring with them might help astronauts stay healthier on long missions. It would also give them more variety. Fresh salad crops grown on Earth contain many micronutrients that processed foods do not. We don't know if crops grown in space are the same. Another concern with growing food anywhere is making sure that it doesn't have any bacteria or fungus on it that can make people sick, sometimes called foodborne pathogens. Astronauts need to avoid contaminated food because the immune system doesn't work as well in space. They could get sick much more easily than someone on the ground. Luckily, the ISS has a plant growth chamber called Veggie. We used Veggie to find out if it was possible to grow nutritious and safe food in space. Here in Figure 1, you can see red romaine lettuce being grown in Veggie on the International Space Station. The mixture of red, blue, and green lights is good for growing plants. In the photo, you can see a chamber bathed in magenta light and enclosed by a plastic covering to control environmental conditions. Methods We used veggie to grow red romaine lettuce on the ISS in three sequential crops over three years. We compared these, ISS grown, to control crops of red romaine lettuce grown at the same time on the ground, ground grown. Apart from the presence of gravity, they were grown under the same conditions we measured on the ISS, humidity, carbon dioxide, and temperature. We collected samples from the leaves and roots of all the lettuce plants. When the mission returned to Earth, we tested all the lettuce for two common foodborne pathogens, E. coli and Salmonella. In the lab, we grew colonies of other bacteria and fungi that we found in our lettuce. We then used DNA isolation techniques to identify bacteria and fungi with the help of national databases. Some species of bacteria and fungi don't grow very well in the lab, so we directly sampled the lettuce for DNA analysis and ran these through the databases. We also determined the nutrient content of all the lettuce samples we grew. NASA astronauts Shannon Walker and Kate Rubens collect salad leaves from veggie. The woman in the center of the photograph is holding leaves in gloved hands. Results. We found, frequently, greater numbers of bacteria and fungi on ISS grown leaves. Here in figure two, you can see the number of bacteria grown in the lab from red romaine lettuce leaves. 
The y-axis uses a log 10 logarithmic scale, which makes it easier to display a very large range of values. In this case, the number of bacterial colonies. On the x-axis, you can see the different years that crops were grown. The purple bars represent red romaine lettuce grown on the ISS, while orange bars represent red romaine lettuce grown on the ground. Which location had more bacteria and fungus on the red romaine lettuce leaves? Similar numbers of bacteria and fungi on roots regardless of where they were grown. Are lettuce all tested negative for E. coli and salmonella? And a higher diversity of bacteria and fungi on the roots than on the leaves of our lettuce. We did not find any differences in nutrient content between ISS grown lettuce and ground grown lettuce. There were some differences in nutrients between the crops we grew in different years. Discussion. Our study shows that it is possible to grow food on the ISS that is safe for astronauts to eat. All of our lettuce had relatively low amounts of bacteria and fungi compared to grocery store produce. Our lettuce also tested negative for common foodborne pathogens. This means that astronauts should be able to eat salad crops grown in veggie without worrying about getting sick. Even though our lettuce was safe to eat, we were surprised to find greater amounts of bacteria and fungi on ISS-grown lettuce. These results could be explained by technical difficulties we had with the air circulation in veggie, lots of bacteria and fungi grow well in wet environments, and additional bacteria and fungi that came from the ISS water supply, air, or astronauts who accidentally transported them onto the lettuce. We think that environmental conditions could have changed the nutrient content in the lettuce we grew in different years. Plants can respond strongly to too much or too little water, and it is hard to water plants in zero gravity. We need to make sure that growing conditions are consistent in veggie. Then astronauts can be confident about the nutrients in their food on long duration missions. Conclusion Astronauts will need innovative ways to provide themselves with safe and nutritious food as space exploration expands and missions get longer. But astronauts aren't the only ones who need safe and nutritious food to stay healthy. There are lots of ways you can make sure you're eating safe and nutritious food here on Earth. Wash your produce before eating it, and don't let leftovers stay in the fridge for too long. Start your own garden at home. Try out new vegetables. You might find a variety you really like. Talk with friends and family about eating a balanced diet. And eat more fresh foods at home instead of going out to eat. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.